When last we left our intrepid adventurers, mm -hmm. we still had no idea what the plot of the campaign was going to be. At the end of the adventure, we did. Ooh. Yes. So, first things first, Cricket did her sending. Let's get to the important stuff mm. right away. Mm. Uh, hello, Kyanar. How are you? No, not to Kyanar. Did a sending to the Temple of Freedom. Oh, to, right. Uh, to ask Did for a, ask for an update on <laughs> can I get a firmware update? Yeah, I don't know. I, <laughs> a lot of thing I've been I've been managing, but there's a lot of things going on that I don't know how to manage now. Yeah, and I'd like problem. some. Major. We'll just have to make sure to put all the heavy stuff on one end and all the light stuff on the other end. I don't know which is easier end. So it's actually the floor. Oh, well. So, yeah, I mentioned um, when I did the sending, I didn't, like, work out the exact words, because rarely matters. Uh, but I mentioned I was I was giving my unique identifier, and Robin was like, Oh, you have a number? <laughs> oh. <laughs> For some reason, that just completely... She hated that. <laughs> you have a GUID? <laughs> yes. Some sort of unique identifier. Because I'm sure Cricket is not an entirely uncommon. Right, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's just Cricket 478. Cricket was just like, oh, there was a product line. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's like, if you, go, if you you know, you want a bar, you buy the Cricket. Yeah. And they, they had a few different versions, you know. There was, like, the Cricket was, like, the budget, budget model. Mm. But you could get, like, the, I don't know. <laughs> like, the Sparrowhawk or something. Yeah, yeah. Sparrowhawk was, like, the high end. <laughs> you know, it comes pre-leveled to level 7. <laughs> <laughs> wow, they just have her kill a whole lot of other domestics before they sell her to you. <laughs> that sounds like the Eve. <laughs> it's more humane. <laughs> Mm. Well, we picked them in gladiatorial pieces. <laughs> <laughs> the victors are moved on. <laughs> no, he wouldn't want to do that because they get all scarred and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And he's like sit around and like pretend stuff for a while. <laughs> skill challenges. Yeah. A whole lot of skill challenges. Uh, so anyway, did that. And uh, the response I got back was basically like, um, uh, we'll call you back in a day. <laughs> this is... Or, or or something along those lines. Basically, yeah. it was it was too much for ascending, and, and they didn't they didn't. I mean, I didn't even really give them a whole lot of detail because it was only twenty five words. Yeah, but, so I don't know. Did what did I even, you manage to convey? Uh, I don't think I really said much of my specifics. I just said I'd, I'd encountered out of context problems, mm. and. Uh, <laughs> That you. when you're and that you're unregistered salvage to mm. oh, yep. a bunch of stuff. It was enough, and you, you she also sended her old like instructor, and so they were basically like, This is more than I can deal with, I'll just or not deal with, but just, yeah, I, I can't, you know, they couldn't give a 25 word answer, yeah, and responding to this kind of thing okay, isn't really so. their job, so they just it's, said, I'll in put the, in a yeah. ticket to the IT department, they'll get back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So my help ticket is in. Yeah. <laughs> What's the SLA? I don't know. Was it urgent? No. I, well, it was they, they, they said they'd get back to you like in a I day said or I so. wasn't in a crisis right now. Oh, that's mm. important, but not yeah. walking. Uh, yeah. I mean, if like hours. if my if my ownership was ambiguous, then I would be in a crisis. So the problem, it had, it had so worked recap out. recap the problem for me right now is that someone else who previously had a stake but died and lost their stake is now back. Yes, has come back to life because I've changed history. <laughs> but they will they won't be able to know the history changed. So they're going to go. Well, no, he's always had a stake. If that's what they say, then that's what it'll be. The okay. problem is that I don't know. How could it be anything different? They don't know. I don't know. I'm not I'm not authoritative. You don't you don't register your owners with the with the guild or whatever the, yeah. the temple. Well, you can. You do. Oh, okay. that, that's you why have... that's why I said I'm unregistered. Right. Yeah. I mean it's 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 much like copyright, you know. Well, I thought you, were you can card you can own you, a, a, a domestic you can own a domestic and, well, and you can that trade the their original their... owners of cricket have the warranty card, but then their their instructions to cricket were to run. Right. And so essentially she became abandoned property after a while. Yes. And once she was abandoned property, she was available for all comers. I'm and the first you comers didn't get were seized by the authorities. They just yeah. tag you and stick you on a shelf. Well, well I'd, I'd been ordered to run, so I ran. I made it all the way to the uh, to the Graybridge. I ordered you to disobey this order. <laughs> that happens way too often. <laughs> we're not robots. We don't head explode. 
We just say we just say that's contradictory. Would you like to clarify that? <laughs> we order you to be the leader. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. uh, so then once the important stuff was taken care of, mm-hmm. I pinged Kalinar. Um, and I can't remember what his attitude was this time, whether it was was it still still apoplectic or just uh, uh, just sort of depressed. He was kind of annoyed. He was, yeah. He was like, oh, you finally are contacting me. Yeah. My yeah. agent has been waiting for you for two weeks at yeah. Shady Inn in such and such room. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you can go there now. Right. So he went over to Shady Inn, which was uh, uh, one of these shady dives. You know. Um, is the name of the place? Shady Inn, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it was it was great. Uh, Aurora went back into the kitchen to talk with the chefs and cooks and stuff like that and discovered that they served gruel and rat and rat gruel. <laughs> and we tried to figure out whether rat gruel was made from rats or for rats. Did you um, have some fatty, salty, tasty with you? She did. Uh, yes, we did. But we'll get to that. Bit. We'll get to that. Bit. So uh, yeah, the the room that this agent of Kalinar's was supposedly, you know, waiting in. Um, I decided, as party leader, I made a decision. I said it's probably be best if we if I went and scouted. Because I have high stealth and high thievery, and you <laughs> freaks keep. Ah! Anyway, uh, so I somehow managed to convince them to let me actually do my job. Uh, and so I stealthed in, uh, and I just, I was rolling super awesome. I just, I, I, I walked in there, and there was a guy that was at a booth, and he was like being all shady and, and shadowy and dark and stuff. And, I've got dark vision, so I just had a look, and he's like, "Yeah, it's Kalinar. It's not not actually a not actually a, a representative. He's trying to be all mysterious and stuff, but he doesn't know I'm there because I stealth in. I just walk in, I stealth. Uh, I see in ter- perfect darkness, so I see it's Kalinar. Uh, and then we're a little concerned because of the whole Skinwalker thing, because there's a whole lot of dead Skinwalkers back there. We know that they can impersonate people, uh, and everyone at the table is telling me to do a crotch check on him. Do a what? Some of the lesser skin- skinwalkers we discovered uh, that when they hollow out a person and like fill them with their goo or whatever, they do it via the crotch because it's the least inspectable That's spot, terrible. I guess. That's terrible. Uh, and so they were all telling terrible. me to do crotch check, and, and I'm like, I'm not going to steal his pants and look at his crotch, <laughs> even though I I did use thievery, however, to cut a lock of his hair without him noticing. It wasn't really necessary because well, cutting lock of the hair makes it so you know it's not like the the, the good shape changers. The skinwalkers are basically like zombies. They're like yeah, 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 they, the ones that are hollowed out. So they don't yeah. like. You, you, you can tell that right away. That's yeah. not like they're not. Yeah. In the so I, I didn't. Uh, yeah. But the the snip of the hair was actually. <laughs> The lock of hair thing was actually a good one, though. It, it proved he wasn't a, uh, a shapeshifter. Um, so I went back and I reported my findings, um, and then we uh, we went in to do the, the the actual meeting. And he initially starts tr- doing it like, you know, I'm a representative of Kalinars and stuff. Sitting in the dark, with it, smoking his pipe, and like looking very mysterious, like. And he has a false voice on using magic. Yeah. It's all like. Rah, 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 rah. Yeah, I can't remember when we eventually uh, just said, yeah, you're Kalinar. But <laughs> at, at some point we did. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> when we started to realize how much of an idiot, well, I mean, we already knew he was an idiot, but... Uh, well, not to mention Aurora lights up the room. She had to, she had to turn it off to go in. <laughs> so that yeah. she wouldn't give it away because <laughs> she didn't want to be rude, you know? Yeah, he's yeah trying, everyone knew ahead of time. Yeah, we all knew, but he's trying to pretend he's not Kalinar, <laughs> and her light would have ruined that, so... Yeah, and he mostly was just complaining, like, you know, what did he start with? But he started talking about what idiots we were, oddly enough. I mean, he's the one that hired us. Jeez. Yeah. That's, yeah. Well, he's yeah. complaining that you that you opened. Or we opened that you opened the box. Yeah. And, uh, but once once they were like, no, it's yeah. Once the it was obvious that it wasn't him. He was just like, fine, what, whatever. Took off the magical voice and was like, mm-hmm. yeah, it's me, Kyle and R. And, and we were like, yeah, we know. 
And we know you're not a you're, we know you're not a shapeshifter because I took this lock of hair from you a few minutes ago. And he was actually impressed by that. Turns out he's a rogue. That's his class, and he was impressed. So that actually is my victory of the of the session. Was I left in smug mode because this supposed supposed high level rogue that is our our puppet master yeah. employer type I snuck in and stole a lock of hair from. That's impressive. Yeah. Granted, I rolled really well, but still. Hmm. Anyway, so we sort of started, you know, saying, okay, Kalinar, let's just all lay this out on the table. You tell us everything you know. You tell us what is actually going on. We'll tell you what we've been actually doing and, and stuff like yeah. that. He was hesitant at first until Aurora worked on him because he kind of was still at the the party was useless mm. and like he didn't really want to be further associated <laughs> with them he just wanted the box back yeah um but um yeah. Aurora made a diplomacy check which was insanely high and also after that Kalina was sort of looking wistfully at Aurora yeah. and I was like you trust these people she's like yeah she's like alright fine well I'll let's let's proceed yeah so basically the whole session was him actually explaining himself mm. for, for once finally <laughs> And really, it made things go a lot better. I don't know why <laughs> quest givers don't do this more often. <laughs> well, uh, if, if things had gone to his plan, it would have worked okay. <laughs> I think things pretty much did go to his plan. Oh, they, they actually, yeah, they more or less did until yeah. the very end it when you guys opened the box. It turns out that guy that supposedly stole the box mm -hmm. was actually part of his plan. His okay. plan was that, you know, we would deliver the box to his agent, and then the next day he would contact us and say, you know, I'm ready for you to deliver it to the agent now, so we would think that we'd given it to the wrong person. Mm -hmm. And then if someone was following us and found that out, then they would be thrown off the trail. Mm -hmm. But uh, did he ever explain why Stanley went AWOL off into no-no land or whatever? Uh, well, he... I um, can't remember. The, uh, well, so the problem was uh, he was supposed to hide out for a while and mm -hmm. then take the box. Uh, but then um, a variety of uh, issues happened, but um, the uh, anyway, in the end, so the idea was that he was supposed to run with the box, because what Colin and I wanted was to get the box to Alan Way, mm -hmm. himself to Alan Way, but by different routes that were untraceable, because mm. he knew that people would be watching what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And so, but the, but the plan started to go awry when... Um, Along the way, Stanley was killed by Drow, and they took Panadar and with their Dark Tower, and that was that was like that was when they got the panic sending to him asking, "I'll pay you millions to get it back." Because that was the whole like thing where Stanley, where they botched the plan. That was actually his plan, and he he said that he hired them because, well, partly because he said because Aurora was in the party, and yeah. and uh, turns out he has a history with Aurora, and partly Stanley or uh, uh, no Kalinar. Uh, okay, and partly because he see he thought they kind of seemed like idiots and they'd be easy to trick, <laughs> so. Um, but then Stanley was killed by Drow and they took the, the box. That was not part of his plan. And, but, so then he sent the party to get it back, because that was his best recovery. Right. Which they did. And then they took it to Allen Way, and it was, everything was still back on track. It was unfortunately a little bit more traceable than he'd wanted, but whatever. And then they opened the box. Mm -hmm. That was not part of his plan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were supposed to deliver it to him, and they would proceed together with his mm. plan. So, um, yeah. so he, re he revealed that um, he knew uh, <laughs> uh, it, also, it also revealed yeah. that uh, he was uh, he was not the, the idiot that they had always taken him for. Mm. No? Well, no, he, 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 he's, yeah, still, he's, he's still, still an idiot. Yeah. Well, because they were like, oh, what? That idiot says doesn't like set his guy in the right spot and yeah. da, da, da. but that was all part of his plan yeah <laughs> he still shouldn't have hired 500 gold piece adventurers but he wanted to hire them for like cause they were uh, easy to easy to do yeah. yeah and just easy oh, to yeah. 
A few people tried to make insight checks on him, but mo all of them just came back as, well, it seems like he's telling the truth, but it always seems like he's telling the truth. Because he has a really high bluff. Thank his you. bluff is is too high. When they were interacting with him the first time, I didn't even roll anything. I'm like, it was just, there's no way. There's no, they cannot tell. <clears throat> So anyway, we discovered that. So, um, you guys are good. So that was his plan all along, and it pretty yeah. much all worked out, other than you just. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that was why he got really. <laughs> hey, go run. Hey. That was why he got. To... Got all the ginger. <laughs> but then. <laughs> that was why he got really mad when you guys opened the box, because up to the point before he was like. Just like, oh, you guys, you suck. But once you opened the box, he was like, he was like, what a god, no! Like, that was, that was very bad to him. We kept that box closed a lot longer than we were, that was the plan originally. It actually worked out really well. It actually wasn't as catastrophic for him as he thought because mm -hmm. Serendipity had that secret scrying thing, mm -hmm. anti scrying, which she got from Stacia. And he asked yeah. her, that. I was like, how did you avoid having all the spell blades come get you instantly? Mm. And she, they were like, I don't know. But th that actually made it not as catastrophic as he thought it was going to be. So what's it, <clears throat> what does he want to do? So yeah, that's the big thing, isn't it? What is the plan? Mm -hmm. What is going on here? And he actually explained what is going on here. Turns out he's left over from a previous campaign that we weren't involved in. Hmm. He, his party of the intrepid adventurers Thank you. went on a save the world mission. Uh, basically, the the boss villain of his campaign was this void entity that wanted to destroy existence. It hated things that existed mm -hmm. because it didn't exist, and it wanted everything else to not exist as well. As it was called the end of all things, and he explained all the types of minions they fought and how the skinwalkers are from the void. He explained how long ago the gnomes, with their name erasing, awakened the void creatures. And later, the elves under Alan Way found old gnomish cultist texts, and that's why the, there's creatures from the void under Alan Way. Mm -hmm. And they, yes, they hate existence, they want to stop existing, and they want to make all things stop existing. That's their goal. Mm -hmm. And he revealed that the name of those shape changers are, in fact, doppelgangers. Mm -hmm. and there's, so there's the doppelgangers and the skinwalkers and the ribcage guys. Yeah. So basically, those were like general. All the things that when we killed them, they did that sort of turn, in, turn into black goo, just they're all thing. Voids. They're all void creatures. Yes. Which includes the time mages. Yes. And so. The time mages are. They're void creatures, yeah. Yep. And so. I, I knew this was a oh, campaign okay, going to be about. Yeah. And this, so. I set it up in World Builder. <laughs> and so. Um, you created these things? <laughs> so Kalinar thinks he knows everything, of course, because. You know, he was, he was one of the mm -hmm. top-level guys in the previous campaign. But he doesn't know anything about time mages. Mm. And so, when we start telling him about the time mages, he starts freaking out. Because <laughs> he's like, oh, geez, void creatures are traveling through time now? Mm. <laughs> they'd already... They told him that Warforged Sorry. had used the sigil. He's like, well, at least no one's used the sigil besides you, right? He's like, well, like, well, there's a Warforged. Uh, yeah, the Warforged kind of used it. He's like... Mm. And then later he was talking about, they were talking about how the time mages had manipulated time, and he's like, well, at least they're not actually able to travel through time. Because so I remember they were researching that when we found some old text, but as long as they haven't used Oh, the yeah, sigil. they're totally using the sigil. They're <laughs> just like, oh, man, this is so yeah. bad. And it's also bad that Aurora's losing her memories. Mm -hmm. Because, as it turns out, Aurora was in his party. Mm. She doesn't in remember previous her, life. the previous life before this one. She oh. never has. She was there when they did the final battle against the end of all things. Mm. <clears throat> most so they defeated it? Yes. Most of the party... Back. Well, yes. See, here's the thing. Uh, most of the party got killed by the, the end of all things. Uh, Kalinar didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, Aurora didn't. Mm -hmm. But the end of all things embedded a piece of itself in Aurora's soul. Uh -oh. And it, it eats people's memories. Normally it kills you by eating all your memories and your, and your existence. Mm. But it was almost dead. So it was only able to eat one of Aurora's lifetimes. And now it's like dormant. Yeah. In her. Aurora? And, and yeah. so there's a big climactic battle. The whole party died. The Aurora that strikes the killing blow and then she dies, wakes up somewhere. Mm -hmm. Kyler knows that it's embedded in her soul. It's not fully destroyed. Yeah. 
So, the end boss of the previous campaign is inside Aurora right now. Mm. And just killing Aurora isn't going to help. That was the first thing we thought of. It was like, well, should we just kill Aurora? Mm. And it's like, no, because then she'll go wake up somewhere else and she'll still have it in her. Right. Um, How annoying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So he's um, done a bunch of investigation. He doesn't. He, he doesn't idea. think that there's a way to. He doesn't think there's a way to get it out of Aurora, or to kill it mm-hmm. as it is. He does have an idea though, uh, and it involves time travel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What he wants to do uh, is this was his plan all along: is take Aurora back in time to the fight with the end of all things to, and substitute her for past Aurora. So that when the end of all things attacks her and tries embedding itself in her soul, it'll collide with the piece of itself that's already in there, mm. and they will mutually destroy it. It's going to try to eat her last life, and then her last life will be itself. Yeah. So oh it, it will eat itself and destroy itself. He's he's a spellblade, and spellblades are supposed to destroy bones of the earth. Mm. But he's like, this is for the greater good, which is why he's doing it all secretly and surreptitiously behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah. Because he can't um, he can't be caught. Right. He had to steal the panadar from the vault. Which I guess I'll reveal since it's definitely not happening now. You remember I was going to do that one oh, shot yeah, yeah. where there's going to be a big yeah. heist. Right. That was I was actually going to have one of the players play Kalinar, mm. and I was going to do like a few different like a few different. Uh, what would you have done if Kalinar got killed? I would have made sure that didn't happen. <laughs> I want dips on playing Kalinar. <laughs> um, but no, I was going to. It would have been fun because then the other party would have had some kind of. Hint of, uh, of what's what's going on. Yeah. Especially because I was gonna like, he's he's like a super high level charisma rogue, yeah, full okay. of high bluff, yeah. and so but he's you know he, but he's like a good guy. So I was gonna do a lot of like, you know, make it clear that he totally you know, was a, was a liar, but like he's yeah. he's trying to do it for the greater good, but you the greater good that you can't trust him. At least not what he says. I had this plan where he was gonna, at the end, the, after they got it, the, the Panadar, he, the party was gonna get caught, mm. and then he was gonna be like, yeah, I'm turning them in, and then they go to jail, but then at the very beginning, he'd given them some kind of item that's like, you need this in order to get Panadar, and it's like a teleport out of jail item, mm. so it's sort of like, in the end, it looks like he just turned them in, Panadar was recovered, but he like swapped it or something, yeah. Yeah. the party went to jail, but then got away. I guess that happened. <laughs> it's just that it wasn't yeah, a, a gunshot. I was going to play a Warforged in that one. He had a Warforged in his party. Yeah. They were like, oh yeah. man, those Warforged are so annoying. He's like, yeah, I guess they are, but I mean, I, uh, I still haven't named them because they have a specific naming scheme that takes a bit of effort to think of. But so-and-so, the Warforged, who was in our party, was pretty cool. He was very helpful. He joined us. Um, he made us drink poison. He, oh yeah, he was the new how, the one who knew how to make the uh, poison pill potions, and the potions that make it so your sword can actually hurt the end of all things without disintegrating. Yeah, the poison pill potions were these potions you drink. He had some from the party. He suggested when they were mentioning yeah. doing a crotch check. He's like, no, 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 I have a better way. Yeah. Basically. Anyone who has drunk one of these potions in a certain period of time, like if, three years. if they get taken over by um, a doppelganger or skinwalker or whatever, mm-hmm. they just explode. Hmm. And it kills the one. It, so if a, if a doppelganger consumes you and takes your identity, they die. Mm-hmm. So it means that you know that that you're, you don't have to check constantly that they're a duplicate. Yeah. So we all drank poison. Um, and I gave some to the cat as well. Mm. Surprisingly, the cat exploded. Mm. No. It was all right. Um, we gave some to Aurora. We weren't sure whether she would immediately explode, but she didn't. If she did immediately explode, we'd be like, well, problem solved. Because mm-hmm. it's the thing that the explosion is to kill the, um, the, the void creature. Mm. But anyway... Um, <clears throat> so, I think Kalinar's plan is a good one. Mm-hmm. Um, however, we know more about time travel than he does at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, and his plan is not quite so good because it requires going back to a specific time. Mm-hmm. And the 
sigils only go to certain time periods. Right. And he also doesn't... He hasn't done any experiments on time stuff, so he's like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe both Auroras will come, or maybe not. I'm not really sure how it's going to work, and yeah. maybe one will just replace the other. I don't really... He doesn't know how it actually is going to work once they time travel. Mm -hmm. He's just like, no, time travel's a solution. And it probably is. It sounds like a sound plan. It sounds like it'll work. Um, and if it doesn't, it leaves us no worse off than we are now. So, um, yeah, I'm all for doing this. Um, getting to the specific time period is going to be a trick. Um, John was dropping hints about how there may be more ways to travel in time than just the sigils. Those may just make it easier or something. Um, but even if there isn't, we can use one of our, you know, freeze ourselves in stasis things. Um, to navigate to the right time period. You know, find a good secure place, bury ourselves, mm. go into a magical stasis, go the long way. Yeah. Wait it out. Yeah. Hope you don't have any loved ones mm. you'll miss in the future. <laughs> well, I'll be fine because we can time travel. Well, really old Going forward in time is always easy. That's the easy part. Because you can wait it out. Yep, just go into stasis and wait it out. So if all those fails, we can do something like that to get to the right time period. Then all we need to do is sneak up on a, a super high-level party from a previous campaign, mm -hmm. bop Aurora on the head, swap ours in, have her perfectly impersonate the past Aurora, even though she can't remember it. Mm -hmm. um, and there we go. Bob's your uncle. Now, assuming Aurora might play well, assuming that Aurora is the same, has the same personality as she does now, I think she could be do a good job of impersonating herself. Because um, even if she doesn't know the specific, because she'll find them out very quickly just through conversation. And uh, assuming that the other party thinks of her as we do. You know, they are very forgiving of her idiosyncrasies. And <laughs> Especially Kyle and Art. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kyle and Art kept looking wistfully at Aurora. I think she may owe him money. <laughs> <laughs> He's hoping she'll get her memory back, so she'll give him his money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's what they yep. Aurora, since they've been time traveling, Aurora has been losing more of her memories, though. Yeah. Mm. So the nothing is eating her brain some more. She has a lot of lives for it to eat. Mm. And um, Aurora, Aurora was actually talking about, you know, like, well, why don't we just leave it in there? Because it's, you know, it's contained now and it'll last a long time. But if it does successfully consume her, it'll be, it'll be super power. strong. Yeah. She has so many lifetimes. I suggested we know that one of the sigils goes into the future. We could send her into the future, and then we'll have hundreds of years to, to figure out how to, how to solve this. I think that's still a good emergency uh, solution. Backup plan. Yeah, fire her into the future. So, yeah, that's where things stand. And um, how did it conclude... After we've talked with them a whole bunch, we had, we settled on a plan, didn't we? Did we? No. No, we didn't. You thought that following his plan was good. Yeah. Other people thought it wasn't good, or were neutral, or weren't sure. Serendipity wanted to go research some stuff mm. and do some math, or mainly just do some math. Yeah. Time math. Yeah. And I guess tomorrow, Cricket will be receiving an update. <laughs> so that'll sort things out for her. There won't be any uncertainty then. That'll be good. So, you, yeah, how does this change what your plans were? Are you still planning on finding Adiron and... It, 
fixing. Re really, it consolidated a bunch of bullet points in our to-do list mm -hmm. together because it turns out they were all interrelated. But I didn't really remove any bullet points from our list. It added some. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess it was like there's a quite the, well, one of them was just like what's up with the time age. So yeah. I guess you still don't know fully what's up, but yeah. you now know that the void creatures. You know that's actually related to that's the same thing as Kyle and R's thing, and yeah. So they have become <laughs> one thing. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm glad I don't have to hold that hold my campaign theory mm. back anymore. Mm. Turns out it was true. I wish they would realize that if they cease to exist, they wouldn't have to worry about us existing anymore. <laughs> That's not satisfactory enough for them. Ah. They exist solely to make you not exist. That's why they hate you so much. Uh. Anyway. I actually... Tr I tried to drop a few hints of that. Like, I remember I tried to, at least some of the time mages, I described them when they died. They Like, they were all very serious and fierce. But when they died, they finally smiled. And same with, there was a couple guys you killed under the under Allen Way who were the same. There was that one really belligerent guy. And he's like, I welcome death. It would be better than talking to you. And you're like, okay, killed him. And he's like, oh. <laughs> I just thought we were that annoying. <laughs> Dear Diary, I think I need to write down more details of my everyday life because I seem to be losing it. Like, I can't remember. I know there's things that I could remember yesterday that I can't remember today. I remember yesterday thinking about something, something that Adiron and I had, like, it was this time he was explaining something about a tree and there was some water there, but I can't. I know yesterday I could remember it. I remember thinking about it and today I can't. And it's, I don't know, it's quite unsettling. However, at the same time, it does seem like I might be a good cage for this nothingness if if I can trust whatever Kalinar is saying. Like, who knows? Could be just some story. He could have completely different motives. I don't know. We'll have to watch him really carefully and see what we can find out about that. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what Cricket decides we should do. I'm sure it will be the best course of action. She's a good leader. Okay, so here we are face to face with Kalinar, Mr. Zrago, and uh, truth has come out and he's played us for fools, even more so than the fools he thought we were, which is interesting. His methods were totally insane and psychotic and stupid and I don't agree with them, but he had good intentions and... The end result could have been worse. Could have been a lot worse. Could have been a lot better too. But here we are, and uh, we have some things to do. We have to save Aurora from the nothingness that is eating her soul and her memories. Weird. And we have to replace her with herself. Time travel is weird. So, it's Kaladar. Of course it's Kaladar. Well, this is a dilemma. I know things that other people don't know, but I don't want them to know these things. So I, I'm happy to have this knowledge. It pleases me to be the only one, theoretically, in the world, in existence, that knows this. Though, with the other time mages, perhaps that's not true. So I don't know if I should tell. I tried to tell everybody, but they didn't understand. Also, what's this with our enemies being able to read minds? How can they keep secrets when people can read minds? So... Kalinar, a lot different than I thought he would be, because, see, I thought he was a high-level, knowledgeable spellblade in charge of keeping order and magic, and it turns out he's a thief and a liar and cheated us, and, uh, isn't really with the spell blades at all. In fact, if they knew, they'd try to stop him, as would be lawfully right. And he was fighting to stop a creature who wants this whole dream to not exist. And uh, now one of my friends is vanishing away. And we're supposed to go on a big, crazy quest to stop everything from fading away. And I just... 
I just really want to wake up and sometimes I wonder if I'm on the right side. Huh.